Um, I just wanted to uh, ask a few questions, Manish. Uh, will, oh, Manish is not here. Yes, please go ahead. I'm listening. Okay, Manish, I was just for asking uh, whether I have to continue with the lecture demonstration, or I I was told by you that that would be a debate, or and she will be posing questions for which I should answer. So, how is that going to be done uh, after the lecture, or uh, uh, it is just question and answer session? No, actually, uh, you have to continue as you are doing. There were lack of questions, and you were like, you have to force people to ask questions. So we just. Brought a faculty who will just ask questions. Okay. So yes, so it's like when they ask questions, you will give more practical examples so they can learn more practical. So that's purpose. Sure, sure. You just have to sure. continue. Okay. So Claudia is here. Claudia is a backup therapist. So Claudia, whenever you have questions, you can uh, interrupt uh, Dr. Lalita and ask for the question and ask for more clarification if you want. Okay. <laughs> I am not used to press sort of questions though. <laughs> Please spare me. <laughs> no, if you, uh, like, uh, if no you, I was just talking to Claudia. If she is preparing for, for some atom and hydrogen bombs for me, then. <laughs> okay. Uh, since uh, they don't know about cricket, I will take the example of football. So if, uh, let's say, uh, if there is Romania is a very good team, let's assume, and uh, and uh, Croatia is a very bad team. So when there is a football match between Romania and Croatia, people will not watch that much. But if it's a match <laughs> between Romania and Spain, everyone will watch. So there is yes. a match between Eastern and modern psychology today. So <laughs> make it more interesting. Yes, hopefully, Manish, hopefully. Right, Fingers we'll, crossed. I'm, I'm <laughs> just on both of you, but I'm sure it will be wonderful practice. Okay, so yes, we can start. Uh, we are already five minutes behind, so we should start. I'll start with a small prayer, a Vedic prayer, a Vedic incantation, I should say, which would bring in, you know, a sense of fulfillment and contentment in life. So that's how the prayer goes. Om Bhadram Karne Vishnu Yama Deva Bhadram Pashye Maksha Bhirya Jatra Sthirai Rangai Stushtu Vagum Sastanubhi Vyasheva Deva Hitayada Yuhu Swastina Indro Vrithashava Swastina Pusha Vishwaveda Swastina Star Kshyo Swasti no brahaspatir dadhatu. Om shanti shanti shanti. Thank you, Anand, all for the patience. So, Today, Manish had given uh, a tougher topic. You know, it's it's not any way related to spirituality, but a challenge, you know, a psychological challenge that around 70% of people around the globe encounter with. And say your nightmares, the dreams, right? Dreams can be good or bad. You know, dreams can sense some things, dreams can be completely nonsensical too. But nightmares are definitely considered as a psychological disorder. We call this as dream anxiety disorder. You know, it's the, that's the word, the psychological term for. Um, correct me, uh, Claudia, if I'm wrong. Okay. <laughs> so, 
this dream anxiety disorder is caused because of anxiety as the very name says but when you delve deep down into the you know layers of mind like you all might be knowing about the three layers of mind we have conscious mind the subconscious mind and the unconscious mind you know it is not the unconscious that you go dizzy and then you go unconscious no <laughs> there's a third layer the third deeper substratum inside your mind called the unconscious mind the first layer is very uh, lucid very obvious everybody is aware of how our mind works how we think how we emote and that's the conscious mind but i better would view all rather than seeing myself <laughs> okay <laughs> so yeah the second layer is the subconscious mind what does the subconscious mind actually you know possess what do they have inside it has all those impressions all those information the tiniest information that we collect through our indriyas indriyas are the sense organs that we have eyes ears nose tongue skin you know all those information grasped by these indriyas are laden in this subconscious stratum of your mind you know you might be smelling some beautiful you know incense sticks but you didn't literally bother to because you have to drive down to your office but still but still even if you didn't notice that particular information goes deep inside your mind seeping down to the subconscious stratum of mind that's how the subconscious mind works the third layer is the unconscious mind mm -hmm. this is where you know yoga comes into picture even psychology you know accepts the truth that in the subconscious mind we behold all those impressions vasanas and samskaras we call it in yoga all those impressions that we have you know got through all the previous lives for example uh, i'll give you a practical example just as manish said manish wants practical examples he is practice oriented you know he is a yoga person <laughs> so uh, a practical example how does a newborn baby know that if i cry as this mother figure comes to me feeds me with something through which the discomfort that i have in my stomach shall be dissolved how does a newborn child do it knows because of this previous birth experiences yeah certain of such previous birth experiences we behold in this unconscious mind okay so it is not just you know all favorable experiences we also behold unfavorable experiences too like uh, you might have heard uh, the technique called hypnosis you know hypnotic therapy where uh, the therapist actually uh, uh, you know make the patient move back move back towards the previous of previous births you know it might be five births behind but she would be able to say he or she will be able to say for example oh i was raped and killed so i i get a wrong feeling whenever i indulge myself in sex you know it happens in hypnotic therapy so this is a kind of vasana or samskara that we carry in the unconscious mind now coming back to our subject dream similarly in yoga we have three states of existence jagrata swapna and shushupti jagrata is the waking state the conscious mind swapna is the dream state the dreams comes out of this subconscious stratum of your mind if you have had the thought that i should have told the truth to my friend but you 
held yourself from the truth and then went away with other things okay by intentionally not talking to her about the truth but what will happen in the dream you will be talking to your friend uh, saying the same truth why because that impulsion you know you have been impelled by that that very thought that you had deep inside that had seeped in in the subconscious mind and in dreams what happens it gets revealed you know sometimes i become the the hero of you know uh, bollywood a bollywood hero myself and then you know starts to fight with persons <laughs> once what happened uh, a funny story happened i i you know i learn a lot of self defense my my daughter myself you know are kara is a karate black belt so i learn a little from her i learn a little from my husband also so what did i do i was sleeping i gave my knee impact <laughs> to my husband who was lying behind me he was so you know he he was so terribly in pain so he had to wake me up why did you do this you were sleep and why are you doing oh i was in the my dream catching that you know that we we indians usually wear the golden chains and all and there are snake chain snatchers up in the north you know it is very <laughs> very popular very naughty notorious so i'm going to catch that notorious chase name snatcher and i was giving a knee on to his solar plexus actually <laughs> so it i hurt my husband so this is how we become you know those things we don't want to be we try to be in that swapna avastha in that dreamy state right being a woman i live i will never do that <laughs> i'll never fight with a person on the street it can't happen for me i'm not that stronger even but still you know you that subconscious mind makes you reveal what you are what you have kept yourself hidden from you yourself you no know? the third thing is the unconscious mind nightmares usually come from this unconscious mind's revelation like people used to get uh, nightmares too often night you know uh, we also get nightmares that is completely normal but too often nightmares is a disorder it definitely says that there is a kind of repressed feeling that you have stored deep inside your unconscious mind and anyhow at some point of time or the other it will come out you know you can't you know hide a volcano inside <laughs> the lava has to come out so this repressed feeling actually comes out of that unconscious substratum as lava and hence you get this nice nightmares there are many causes of nightmares you know i have a uh, hell a lot of a list in this uh, let me just read it to you anxiety bad quality of sleep if you are an insomniac yes nightmares are you know very successively happening if you have a sleep apnea if you don't have proper oxygen consumption inside while you are breathing and there is some obstruction in the uh, uh wind pipe of yours with the you know obstruction can be the mass of fat you know and hence you have trouble in 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 uh, the oxygen uptake and um, people snore also uh it this with this sleep apnea disorder that can also happen uh, uh nightmares uh, can also happen at this kind of uh, problems drinking alcohol drinking caffeine can disturb your sleep and hence you can get nightmares if you have pets sleeping around with you you know like you have pussy cats you have small dogs around you they don't sleep comfortably you know they could sleep just for 2 3 hours and be fresh you know <laughs> jumping here and there so their disturbed sleep can influence your sleep and hence um, people are you know told that pets should never sleep on bed they should have their own kennels they should have their own homes and then you can put them off to sleep drug abuse is also one another reason but 
pushing all these psychological factors, psychological causes aside, what does yoga and Vedanta has to say about insom uh, nightmares and insomnia? The cause of this abnormal revelation of an unconscious mind as nightmare is fear. Fear of uncertainty. Like there are, you know, many things happening around your life. Good, evil, favorable, unfavorable. When you are not ready to face an unfavorable outcome, an unfavorable situation, what do you do? You try to, you know, have that kind of uh, random thought that this shouldn't happen in my life. I'm going to appear for an interview. I should crack this job. I should crack this interview. I should impress people and I have to be there. I have to be there. I have to be there. The constant lingering on with that particular thought, what it had created, it had created a fear that if you're not going to crack the job, if you're not going to crack the interview, you will be doomed. Or there is this fear that you are not going to crack this job. You're not going to crack this interview and you're not ready to face that. If you're not ready to face your failure, if you have the fear of uncertainty, these both fears causes anxiety and it causes nightmares. So what does yoga has to say about it? Yoga has many, many, many small, you know, uh, mediums and techniques to get over with fear. Before moving into those yogic techniques, I just wanted to ask you, have you ever seen Indian idols, you know, the, the iconic, uh, iconic figures of India, like Indians like uh, Lord Shiva, Lord Krishna, Lord Rama? Have you ever seen the Lord's faces and their forms? Have you ever happened to? Yeah, in pictures. Yeah. Yes, yes, in pictures. Simona, I wanted to ask you, how are their hands? If you can quickly Google do, you know. <laughs> no, they were blue. That's not cheating. <laughs> they were blue. And usually they had some swords. Swords. And how knives. were they? How is their hand basically? One right hand. The gesture. Above the hand? No. Just the palm. How is their lower lower hand? The palm. Yeah, Cassie, you're right. That's, it's facing uh, like this. Yes. Whenever you see Shiva, whenever you see Lord Rama, Krishna, anyone for that matter, even, even the Lordess, Devi, you know, Durga, huh? they always have this mudra. Hmm? In Bharatanatyam, we call it as Pataka mudra. <laughs> the classical dance that we have. What does this mean? This mudra is called Abhaya mudra. Bhaya means fear. Abhaya means fearlessness. Every deity, every you know figure of inspiration gives the first prime lesson, you know, push aside Nadi Shuddhi, push aside Shishasana, push aside Ujjayi Pranayama, don't worry about practice. What do you have to practice? Abhaya, fearlessness. That's the first lesson that every deity teaches you. What is fearlessness? We'll go into it. Can I, can I interrupt a little just to say something about um, how, how we view it in the Western psycho psychology um dreams it's really connected with what you are saying that the mind is trying to um, calculate what's coming next so when you're in a in a situation of uncertainty like for example your the job interview that you mentioned we also say that that there is one way of dispelling that uh, uncertainty by calculating possible routes 
And a nightmare or, or a dream in which maybe something bad is happening, let's say you don't get the job or you get a, a criticism or something in right. the interview, is one way of, uh, of the mind to try to dispel the uncertainty to kind of calculate, let's see how it would be if that would happen. So mm -hmm. I will be better prepared because um, it, there, are, there are many studies in psychology, um, like research studies with people in... Um, um, also like, experimental conditions where they were asked to um, mentally kind of go through a situation that they have never been in, like for example, skiing. And then they tested them for, for how, how good they improved their, their skiing or how, how well they, they did the skiing. And it was better if they could imagine it just in their head. So they, it also goes harder to test with dreams, but it also goes the theory that Sometimes the mind is trying to make up the dream, some, some kind of uh, problem solving technique, let's say. Mm. So you go into the dream to solve an uncertainty, to expose yourself to a situation. And sometimes that problem solving can be very, uh, very nasty. Well, also. <laughs> yes. So what happens is there is a thin line between useless and distress. Yes. <laughs> a minimum optimal amount of anxiety calculating things is wonderful that is how you have to you know enhance your work performance your job performance but we do not understand the line of demarcation and we become over anxious over fearful over calculative always hyper vigilant about things oh this is going to happen if uh, after this, I'm going to plan about this. After this, I'm going to execute that. After this execution, I'm going to incorporate this thing in my life. It's just going on and on and on. We are hyper ready. <laughs> yes, and then sometimes exactly this, this uh, habit of the mind that's trying to anticipate and calculate everything is exactly what is yes. more anxiety. Very much. Very much. And more need for problem solving and anticipating and then more anticipating is creating more anxiety. More anxiety. Yes. More, an anticipation, more anxiety, more fear. Yes. And then more nightmares. More, you know, more a neurotic kind of condition. And I should add here, Claudia, it is not just the mind's habit. It is the gift that we have got from these. Overexposure of social media, overexposure of smartphones and lappies and whatnot. Technology is, you know, according to Indian astrology, is denoted by Rahu. Rahu is a is a kind of um, celestial being, uh, which denotes a snake. Snake means poisonous. <laughs> Technology is good. And technology is poisonous too. So you are so habituated in scrolling that you do not read things. You just scroll, 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 scroll. You know? That habitual pattern, you know, I, I've seen people, you know, who always, you know, shake their hands, shake their legs while talking, you know, while just listening to me, you know, they shake their legs continuously. Like, where is this energy coming from? <laughs> This energy, this hyper energy is in mind and it is getting exhibited in your body. All the waste of energy, don't you find? You know, I've seen people carrying a bucket full of water. You know? How do you carry a bucket full of water? When you tense your, you know, tarsals and metatarsals, sorry, carpals and metacarpals of your hand, and then you're going to lift with your tightness of bicep and tricep, you're able to lift the bucket full of water but people do like this yeah. can you see that the unnecessary tension jaws doesn't have any strength to lift the water at all but how do we do we try to displace unnecessary stress you know in our body forget about things in the mind even in the body we exhibit unnecessary stress that's all over here that's all over here. Coming back to, <laughs> sorry, coming back to the fearlessness. Fearlessness, as everyone understands, is not absence of fear. 
is not at all absence of fear. Fearful is the very, you know, sense when you have it as a being. As an embryo, you are fearful. You know, when there is excessive light, the embryo feels shrinked. You know, the small little, tiny little fetus gets shrinked, right? When the mother eats too much, <laughs> then also it is stress, it is fearful, right? Fear is there. You cannot completely, you know, avoid that fear. But by saying abhaya, fearlessness, the deity, the, the, the gods, the lords want us to observe that feeling called fear as a third party so that you can dwarf that feeling. You know, you are a very good counselor when your friend breaks up with his or her own girlfriend. You can counsel his, him or her in a, you know, beautiful manner. You become strong. Oh, this comes and goes. Friends comes and goes. Love is just a, you know, thin air. You can just shift from one person to another person. If you don't find a proper person, you'll, you'll find another one. But the same thing when it happens to your life, to you, you know, all these knowledge goes <laughs> <with us away. laughs> so, the, the Lord says, Abhaya, fearlessness is to watch that fear as the third party. When you watch the fear as a third party, you become strong. You are the third party to your friend, you know. You can just watch her trouble. And when you're outside the trouble, when you're outside that problem with a witness attitude, you will be able to think clear you'll be able to come up with good solutions to overcome. That is Abhaya. Abhaya is fearlessness. Abhaya is fearlessness means observe the fear so that you dwarf it out. No? You make it minimum as possible. We all have fears. Heart attack, no? earthquake, uh, corona, <laughs> Uh, what all? Um, recession period. <laughs> Everyone has fear. Nobody has no fear. No? Everyone has fear. It, we have so much of fear that we, you know, it chokes our energy and becomes difficult to make, you know, to clearly see our life, to clearly present ourselves in life. Yeah, it is not right. that, yeah, yeah. No. With uh, just before we go uh, further with this observation, this is something that we are trying to do also in psychotherapy, in Western psychotherapy. But people often get confused what do I observe in fear? What? Because they, some, some people get overwhelmed in their thoughts, some people get overwhelmed in their body, in the physical sensation mm -hmm. of fear. And mm -hmm. what does uh, uh, what do you recommend we start observing? Yeah, that? Claudia. Uh, like we, this just psychotherapeutic counseling, um, uh, we did, uh, I think in, uh, uh, with Manish's help, we did a psychotherapy and yoga counseling therapy sessions where uh, we treated, you know, we actually trained uh, the yoga instructors with psychotherapeutic counseling and yogi counseling methods too. So there, uh, I had an opportunity to train a few uh, students of Manish and uh, Dr. Ritesh Patel. So there I uh, mentioned them to, while you are counseling, you know, the, the patients and asking, her, uh, asking them to have this uh, Sakshi Bhava, witness attitude, you know, People have the difficulty to actually feel the fear, feel that particular emotion, which, you know, makes them uncomfortable. It might be fear, it might be, you know, death, distress, you know, death, distress is stress ranked one. <laughs> death of life partner, death of a near one, loved one, you know, how to actually observe it. It needs, first of all, supine relaxation, Claudia. And while you are at rest, it is not just lying down on the couch. 
but we have this technique called shavasana deep relaxation technique where we make the participants to observe each and every part of the body toe ankle shin knee every part of the body till the hair follicle that they have now while they are practicing this observation aspect they are asked to move away from the toe move away from the ankle transcend away from the shin you know that's how we ask them from the bodily level to shift their focus you know to make the focus happen and shift from it to defocus so it is a kind of focus and defocus that we actually teach so it is very easy to watch your fingers right <laughs> <coughs> sorry <coughs> it is very easy to observe your throat it is very easy to observe the contortions in your forehead you know so from there we try to transcend the person and then move towards mind and here at the mental layer we ask them to rewind the situations like there are four situations one the happiest event that they had in their life two the worst event that they had in their life we we actually want them to rewind and then as a third party observe how you were crying as a third party observe how you were excited you know some something like that there are three and four models also with these models we try to make them focus and defocus together that is called dharana and dhyana of the eight limb yoga you know eight limb yoga dharana is focus and dhyana is defocus so all these years we have been focusing 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 you know by the age of 5 we were focusing on studies <laughs> by the age of 14 we were focusing on you know uh, perhaps uh, uh, sex <laughs> by the age of 25 we were focusing on profession by the age of 38 40 we were focusing on family by the age of 55 65 we were focusing on retirement benefits <laughs> so all these years we have been focusing and spending what we call as prana shakti the vital energy instead restoration of prana restoration of vitality is that the psychic energy that i'm talking about is focus and defocus so that's how we harness people you know uh, i hope claudia you understood what i mentioned yeah yeah so moving ahead everybody has fear <laughs> everybody has fear to overcome the fear we have certain tactics <laughs> you know like uh, people 80% of people majority of people run towards wealth amassing wealth and prosperity thinking that one day i'll become so big that all these problems seem to be petty and small and then you know i become so big all these problems will not intimidate me that's how they think the tragic paradox is <laughs> the bigger you become the bigger the anxiety is the bigger the anxiety is the bigger the fear is so you have not actually worked upon your fear rather intensified that fear understand amassing wealth or power or if you think if you are going to amass you know lots and lots of relationship and friends and you know uh, going along with using drugs and drinking alcohol and then you know do the parties and merry making and jazz music and all those things if you think it's 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 a kind of you know 
um, escapism or the counter magnet for stress or fear, it is actually, you know, making this anxiety bigger and bigger more. Why is it so? While you amass wealth, power, you know, fun aspect. Lord Krishna in Bhagavad Gita says, you have developed a kind of new fear <laughs> to protect all these. <laughs> when you amass more wealth, what happens? A new fear emerges inside. How do I protect this? When you amass more friends, you know, you have to have put in more efforts to keep up those relationships. Even worst. <laughs> So he calls it that yoga and kshema. Kshema is protection. Yoga is amasi. So you all the entire 80 years of life, you either aggregate something, you know, amass something, or you are protecting those which you have been aggregate. <laughs> Krishna says, leave those yoga and kshema to me. Completely surrender yourself to the Lord. I am there to take care of you. I am there to take care of you. I was just wondering. I saw, you know, once I was in this, um, I belong to a village where, you know, the limestones have been made. There, there are huge rocks, you know, and then they have been, the granites have been, uh, uh, you know, broken with strong equipments and then small limestones are made. When I was walking through those mines, I saw a rock which has been hammered by a person and then the rock was open and inside the rock I saw a frog inside the rock I saw a frog living and I was asking my father my father said you don't know about it there are many beings inside the stones also they live I asked my father who gives food to them? Frog lives on insects. Who gives food to them? My father, you know, smilingly said, it is Lord Shiva. You know, it is Lord Asparvati who gives food to them. If he knows how to feed the frog inside the rock, who has no avenues open? He knows very well how to take care of his children, don't you think? Don't you feel? Can, can I have a question here? Yeah, or like, um, okay, let's say we don't uh, accumulate things. We don't try to to have more things, uh, no money. Yeah. But then, how how is it with the maybe with the homeless people who are sick and they are dying on the street because they are having? Claudia, no, 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 no. Oh, you have taken the. Uh, perhaps you have. You are attending my first session, and then you are not understanding. Perhaps, yeah. yeah, you have extrapolated my example into another situation. I'm not talking about homeless or needy or poor people not to put in efforts, not to work at all. I'm not talking about we ourselves who have homes, better shelter, good food, good clothing to wear, not to work. I'm not talking that. I'm not advising you people. But I am trying to suggest that while you work, you are so, so focused to, towards the objective that half of the energy that you have to create in your productivity, create inside the work that you have to do has been mismatched, you know, misguided, mischannelized towards those, you know, the goal, the goal, the goal all the time. You create that anxiety and hence, even the, the, the piece of work is not done properly. It's not accomplished properly. It's because of the mismatched energy. You know? Do you understand now? Yes, yes. Now, so it's an not going in either extreme. Like yes. So, excellent. Excellent. Buddha also same, says the same thing. He calls this as Majjima Pratimada, Pratipapada. What does it mean? The middle path. The middle path. Yes. Mm -hmm. The middle path. 
you don't go to extremes but you do find your balance mm-hmm. the work life balance the work mental balance for god's sake right so what had happened uh, okay no problem imola imola you can leave thank you <laughs> imola has been very uh, kind enough to appreciate things it's very interesting i'm sorry I'm, i have to leave <laughs> so by amassing more wealth more fun and more prosperity or more you know or, or people are you know health panic now what time nowadays i see i see people uh, jogging at 2 am in the morning saying that i don't have time for jogging so i'm jogging 2 am <laughs> no heights there's no there is no uh, sense in it right if you don't find that balance in life then jogging itself will not fructify right it will not give that kind of a health it will not it will not enhance your cardio respiratory uh, parameters perhaps the the wind the cold winds that you are you know uh, enduring while you are jogging and the inside body temperature is high outside it is very cold and you are jogging 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 you, the the difference in the temperature can make you more sick for god sake <laughs> so Uh, claudia i hope you got my point yeah yeah okay so the tragic paradox is bigger we think we become the bigger the anxiety is krishna says you are a being you are my i am the splendor you are my shine i am there to help you out when when that kind of belief happens within you if you don't believe in god don't worry you at least believe in a cosmic energy which had created the entire universe you at least believe that th- there is this energy which makes this you know balkano under under control which makes this atlantic ocean doesn't come inside the <laughs> land you no know, you you believe that cosmic energy yes that divine cosmic energy is there to protect you is there to help you that faith will dispel this fear which will create that fearlessness you know which will create an outlook which could actually you know dwarf that fear feeling now i come down to yogic solutions because it is almost time if i'm not going to give yogic solutions you're going to give me three slaps oh you told us that i'm going to give you the techniques and you're not so the first yogic solution is priya prarthana the mother of shri arbindo you know in pondicherry talks very high of priya it is just the opposite situation of what our mind rants about the mind is ranting about many things it is crying it is yelling it is excited deep inside everyone knows there is a strong villain inside but nobody wants to show it but deep down we all know that there is a strong villain which makes us you know think about wrong doings think about uh, misdoings think about you know opposite events which had which you definitely had not encountered only this evil force can be calmed down only with constant positive successive verbal thoughts that i call as prayer it's a small definition you could write it down if you want constant repetitive positive verbal thought why verbal thought why don't you pray you know inside the mind when you pray inside without speaking actually this devilish devilious heinous criminal thought comes out <laughs> so when you speak it you you speak all good right we are trained so we are trained by our parents oh guests are coming don't speak nonsense <laughs> behave properly okay so we are trained in such a manner that while we speak we always speak sense so that we are so you know Uh, concerned about your personality that our speech should be good so when you verbally put your thought out you will always speak good positive so prayer has to be verbal 
and it has to be successive it is just not one prayer you know and that we do claudia for your information um in the technique called shavasana which i was mentioning you moments ago where we deeply relax and we call this as sankalpa a mental verbal repetition of thoughts we either make them repeat the small positive short statement not measuring only to 3 to 4 words no not more than that 3 to 4 words and then we ask them to repeat it time and again sometimes it is 3 sometimes it is 9 even with cancer patients you know reversal of cancer we work with we work with reversal of aids you might have heard about dean ornish cardiac programs dean ornish had created you know these cardiac um, myocardial infarction completely dissolved completely you know reversed such reversal of disorders is possible with yogic outlook only with this significant something called magical prayer the second technique that yoga gives is meditation but i should say when a person is deep down depressed have some obsession have some uh, you know ocd obsessive compulsive disorder we will not suggest meditation at all why people who are introverted when they ask to meditate you know even while i am going to guide him about vast infinite blue sky he is deep down you know meditating upon vast infinite his own problems <laughs> so with depressive neurosis we will not advise meditation but except for that you have an anxiety problem you have a uh, panic related problem you have a you know hysteria problem any any psychological disorder for that matter uh, we definitely suggest meditation and meditation has to be a guided kind of meditation better if it is one to one if you don't have one to one or at least this zoom live session where people can stop and then ask claudia you know stopped me okay let me just you know try to understand what you are speaking so that kind of interactive session live can help live meditations can help the third and the last suggestion would be the cds and the youtube videos and the audio clips that you get in the in the uh, social media forum for meditation because when there is no other thing possible you know when there is lockdown out there is no other thing possible so you have to rely upon such audio clips of youtube so that would be the last option meditation will definitely create a vast impact vast impact there have been number of national and inter international journal publications on medica meditation where it influences psycho neuroimmunology it influences your immune system it influences your endocrine and neuro ner nervous system it influences your you know limbic system your brain and the way of operations you know that is very very important in a uh, in in case of psychological disorders so meditation is one powerful technique the third one interestingly is swadhyaya what is swadhyaya swadhyaya means self study it's not studying self i've been doing self study a lot uh, claudia might have been you know uh, studying more of psychiatric modalities you know all those books all those you know i call them as pillows Now you can keep them as pillows and then lie down. This thick they are. <laughs> so that's that's exactly not self study. Mean studying yourself, introspecting yourself, and understand your true nature is self study. How do you understand your true nature? When I am completely perturbed, when I am completely stressed out, troubled inside, I'm anxious. How am I going to study myself? i will get the feeling that i am the worst personality <laughs> how am i going to do that at that point of time be with the persons who have you know uh, high spiritual experience 
talk to them have beautiful interactions like arjuna did you know i talk about bhagavad gita time and again the arjuna the warrior who was completely panic attack who had a panic attack actually who had who had a major outburst emotional outburst at the warfare you know at the battlefield and krishna was there to counsel him so that kind of interaction but with a person who has higher spiritual wealth in him not with a person who you know who can just you know give a few tips and then uh, make you know temporary solutions can be made no swadhyaya is being with those spiritual persons uh, i'm not talking about myself but yes satsanga like this can definitely have a visual clarity you know mental clarity psychic clarity swadhyaya satsanga like this that interactive sessions where we talk about you know the scriptural sayings like bhagavad gita valmiki ramayana upanishads vedas vedanta you know all these ancient books have beautiful humanistic approaches to solutions you know very much relevant to this world very very much relevant to this post modern world when you understand this humanistic approach when you understand this moral approach to solutions of your problems then this swadhyaya becomes fruitful you know swadhyaya self study understanding your true nature by being with people by studying such scriptures you know so these are the three four techniques what yoga actually suggests you and it proclaims actually you know with with which great uh, what should i call with great confidence says while you adopt such yogic and vedantic techniques one can be productive one can be more intelligent more productive more creative enough to handle your fear to handle your anxiety and once this is done i can tell you the the frequency of nightmares can go down and while i was you know uh, browsing through pubmed the medical journal you know the international medical journal upon nightmares there have been studies on meditation and nightmares where with meditation where with yogic solutions these nightmares have been the frequency have been come down you know rather than going for uh, psychiatric drugs which makes you just sleep you down you know which puts you to sleep down you know? but this is more relevant kind of technique where you can adopt implement and you know incorporate these lessons into life can, can i have a question yeah so for self study um do you think that the western kind of psychotherapy or psychoanalysis where people come weekly in uh, to talk to a therapist and they talk about their dreams and maybe make sense of them uh, together with a therapist and try to understand what is coming up from the unconscious uh, level of the mind in the night Claudia don't get offended with my answer okay um <laughs> uh, Bhagavad Gita itself says dhyayato vishayan pumsaha sangasteshu upajayate sangat sanchayate kamaha kamat krodho bijayate krodhat bhavati sammoha sammohat smriti vibhramaha smriti bhramshat buddhi nashah buddhi nashat pranashyati uf quite long sorry which means when you talk about the problem the problem is not shared but the problem magnifies it's not me who says it's lord says it it's simple it's logical if you just you know could delve deep into what krishna says pushing aside your psychiatric modality is allowed aside i've seen people with knee pain crying talking about complaining about knee pain to n number of persons even to the guests who come home <laughs> while you talk about your problem 
you never you know you whine about it you are never out of that problem claudia you can give you you can you know make that counseling work only when you bring that permanent solution understanding making them understand for example knee pain i have taken an as, as an example making them understand knee is there there is a degenerative disorder aging will happen strengthening the knees is what you can do whining and talking over the problem shall actually magnify your knee pain not going to help your knee pain at all for example i am a person who you know whine about being cold i i don't like cold you you've seen me work <laughs> always decked up with so much of clothes huh my husband used to say when you are when you are wearing more clothes you will feel more colder and he's right and he's right the act of you know what do you call this disconnectedness from the problem is the solution as a third party what do you do you are observing the fear you are observing the problem now you disconnect yourself from the problem when you are with the problem you talk about it you talk for 5 hours in a counseling session you talk for 7 months in counseling session he will be your patient for life claudia <laughs> i i have some dentist friends you know uh, don't please don't uh, uh, share this with anyone but they say my patient will never he will always be my patient for life <laughs> because once you are going to dentist you will always be you know dependent and reliant on dentist that's how somehow some i'm not talking about you but some psychiatric modalities that's how does not provide temporal you uh, know permanent solutions mm -hmm. but you know making them talk and talk and talk and perhaps you know creating a cyclone inside creating that whirlpool effect inside that they are completely inside that whirlpool with that thought very thought only they are not you know they are not uh, ready to come out of that whirlpool and it is a whirlpool nobody can you know <laughs> get out of it right so my uh, i'm not talking about my geeta's suggestion is disconnectedness detachment from the problem when you detach yourself you'll be able to visualize clearly oh this is not his problem this was mine it was my jealousy which had made me you know work against him oh it was my fear of uncertainty because because of that i have mistook her you know that kind of intellectual clarity can happen only when you are distant away from the problem not talking about it yes yeah, so i understand that uh, self study is this this observation from the outside of the problem of whining about it and staying in it and exploring it at the same level that it is created because we also say that you cannot solve a problem with the same mind that you created it of course because you created it in some way with your emotions and your projections and you cannot solve it within the same level you have to go up one level to be able to see and this is how uh, this is how some modalities of psychotherapy like the ones that i use are working in in this idea of extracting you from the problem and seeing it from above and then when you talk you're not actually whining you're mostly observing objectively with the help of an objective mind yes if you can develop that sakshi bhava witness attitude mm -hmm. then it becomes a yogic modality yes yeah then it never remains a psycho psychotherapeutic modality <laughs> he himself try to you know detach himself and then understand oh this is my solution yes yes, yes. yeah yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so uh, i know uh, manish that i i am running out of time but i just have two points to cover if i could finish this then uh, i think i would be able to present myself in a better manner if you could allow me yeah okay so all these things are not uh, baseless they are whatever that has been discussed 
are based on patanjali yoga sutras where patanjali says abhinivesha is a klesha klesha means the poison of your life affliction of your life affliction one great affliction of your life is fear fear of uncertainty fear of death all those things put together you no know? so you have to work upon this fear that's what patanjali says and gita i'll end with this uh, beautiful shloka where krishna says vita raga bhaya krodha manmaya mam upashata bahavo gyana tapasa bhuta mad bhava magata vita raga bhaya krodha there have been many saints krishna says there have been many saints many yogis many yoginis you know <laughs> yoginis can also be there there have been many yoginis who had obtained that divine heart of mine who had you know who had reached me who had reached that divine cosmic energy by by avoidance of raga attractions bhaya fear krodha anger these three things he mentions so the first and foremost step is to work upon fear later on we'll talk about perhaps raga and anger issues and all but yes fear 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 it's that himalayan cause that we have to work upon the cause of all anxiety the cause of all bad dreams the cause of insomnia bad quality of sleep the cause of anxiety the cause of depression the cause of ocd um a cause of dysthymia the cause of anhedonia who oh, name any claudia you know all those psychiatric disorders the cause is fear abhinivesha so we will work together with this abhinivesha with manish's help we'll learn yoga and some meditation techniques with swadhyaya i i think i'm going to be there how much ever i'll be there and uh, let me help with you or you can help me with with your inputs you know that's the satsanga that's an interactive session which we will be working upon and we'll start with the this day with beautiful constant repetitive short positive statements called prayer so we'll end the note with a prayer namaskar mudra sit you straight the prayer is on universal welfare let everyone be happy let everyone restore themselves with health let every one of us see that auspiciousness see that real self observe that original nature which is bliss peace and being home sarve bhavantu sukhinah sarve santu niramaya सर्वे भद्राड़ी पश्यन्तु माकश्चित् दुखबाग भवेत् ओम शांत शांत शांति थैंक यू सो वेरी मच इफ एट ऑल यू हैव एनी क्वेश्चंस आई एम देयर or if you find it is very late we we'll, we we'll, we can end also the session <laughs> i have a question if i may i have to go uh, but, sorry 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 simana i i have to go but thank you for the lecture uh, and uh, perhaps see you another time and thank you everyone bye sorry simana bye no problem um i missed the point on how to use the mudra to invoke or use or achieve the fearlessness with the hand I forgot the name of the mudra. Uh, is it uh, abhaya or abhaya? Which one is it? Abhaya. 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 Okay. A B. Let me just write. Yes, please. A B H A Y A. Yes. Abhaya mudra. Okay. But, but I missed the point. Don't understand. <laughs> you know this yeah, is how we yeah. there all the time but we are not fearless with this 
understanding the concept of fearlessness you know is more abhaya mudra than holding that mudra <laughs> yeah okay. what the connection or i didn't uh, i didn't understand the what you meant about that because the subject got uh, uh, discussed on another path and i didn't know if you wanted to follow something to say something about this uh, mudra or not yeah simona you didn't get the prelude of it i was saying that all those uh, Id idols all those deities all those indian lords and lords lordesses like shiva krishna durga everyone has this abhaya mudra that that the lesson that they give is the first and foremost lesson when you come to me you have to be fearless okay. how to present yourself fearless is not beyond being devoid of fear fear i am very sorry it is not being devoid of fear but having that witness attitude towards the very survival instinct fear of yours you know when you witness that then you can you know minimize that figure minimize the amount of fear that you have you know that's what the lesson of abhaya mudra says of mm -hmm. of the idols that you see mm -hmm. and you mentioned thank you and you mentioned what is yoginis yogis and yoginis it's the first time i heard hear oh, this word oh acha you didn't know simona you are a yogini manish is a yogi <laughs> so female and masculine form feminine ah. and masculine <laughs> what is it really trying to calculate what is yogini oh, i am a yogini <laughs> no i thought that i'm a beginner and this is why i'm a yogini and the manish is more advanced i hope <laughs> and sorry man is just joking that's and i thought that it's better or okay <laughs> that's that's very no, modest i am a beginner <laughs> i am a beginner thank you so very much for translating no, all we, the indian we, we words because i don't know in indian culture we don't treat anyone as beginner anyone as intermediate anyone that's there in the asana form <laughs> somehow i do not know but every birth that we have is an opportunity that we climb up towards that spirituality so we are all yoginis we are all yogis uh, okay <laughs> thank you Can I say something also, please? Um, you have talked about um, this way in which we interact with the experiences of life, and um, it's not about going too deep into the experience. Sometimes it's about watching it somehow from from outside. and um, i have experienced this a lot of time disconnecting from the problem and going into the observing um, observing state in which i can watch all the fears all the thought patterns all that's coming up um but sometimes like you said there is some attraction to go into the hole again like uh, <laughs> you know uh, uh, you know somehow that you will reach at the same place pull this deep attraction and going into the into the vortex <laughs> again i don't know how to call it. Yeah. So yeah. maybe next time if you feel like and everybody it would be an interest for everybody else maybe we can talk about this pool when we somehow at some level we know that's not something which serves and honors ourselves but there is this pool of going in and uh, how can we deal with that pool how can we do that Very beautiful I'll surely come up with that the next uh, sunday <laughs> that we'll meet but uh, i'll i'll try to uh, you know uh, quickly uh, give a suggestion with a small practical example once again <laughs> so uh, you know this is our beautiful vinyas yoga studio that we have you know we have a beautiful studio okay so whenever participants come to our studio it is our usual practice that we ask certain queries like how regular your bubble movements are you know do you have a headache do you have a you know a, 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 the spell of dizziness or you you have any discomfort in your heart such questions are being put black and white okay so we write it down we note it down and we have a, a good 
uh, filing of their medical details you know pre yoga post yoga what had you know what kind of improvements in their lung capacity in their vitals in their psychological assessments such medical filings we we do whenever i encounter any participant you know for this registration to, for this queries being put black and white people come up with oh you know i have 15 years of my diabetes my diabetes is killing now i you know i've lost this joint mobility only you know now i'm not able to you know have that sex urges i i my my quality of sleep is you know disrupted because of polyuria and i have to go and urinate all the time in the night and all those things health will happen when you disown yourself from disease it is my diabetes my insomnia my you're starting to own your problem and that is why you'll remain in problem so my kind advice at the very step of writing those information you know in my four in my files then and there only before even starting yoga practice i ask them can i rewind your statements and then say the same things to you because you can hear and listen to it clearly and then make them understand this part that disowning of the disease christina you got to know how to disown even your attractions even your repulsions raga and dvesha you know yeah you have, you have to disown even that so we'll very well come up with raga and dvesha if manish you know uh wants us anything more to add upon we'll add that also otherwise we'll work upon the uh, other afflictions of life patanjali calls them as afflictions of life along with the fear attractions and repulsions he calls okay. them as poisons of life so we'll talk about that in the next sunday perhaps thank you christina for the input thank you so much <laughs> Uh, a brief question if it's possible still yes sorry um, yeah. what would you what would be your considerations in a children's nightmare i have several families who have mm. little children from starting from 3 years of age up to even 6 uh, with children um, aurelia there have been very very many medical researches happening that why children do get this um, nightmares fifty uh, percent of the problem lies in their late night snacking. Mothers, okay. mothers actually uh, encourage late night snacking. You know, a bar of chocolate. You know, or uh, you know, the chips, the crisps that they have. All these things create nightmares because that keeps their brain to be active all the time. <laughs> so that is one reason. second is you know ask them to uh, clear away their urinary bladder just you know to go to the to go and pee before their bed that can also help with children children are not hyper anxious but children are hyper energetic so uh, their um, uh, frequency of nightmares is not that um, harmful as adults ones so there's no, no more uh, yogic practices involved necessarily for 3 year old or 4 year old kid because they will not be able to meditate but yes if they cut down their late night snacking you know or at least they if you if they could have a two and a half hour gap between the last dinner meal skipping the supper and then directly go to bed that can halve the problem actually okay i think that's that's it i, I hope aurelia uh, you had your answer uh, is there any other question or shall we i will speak okay uh, yes please 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 i can ask later no problem only one one maybe proposal for next time you mentioned something about cancer and re- being reversible i know that sounds very strange but you said something uh you have classes or patients i don't remember exactly 
I'm interested in that subject. Maybe yes, not. Us, yes. Maybe when, not next weekend, but whenever you want, or I can participate in some other day or other classes if you want. If, if I, I do not know whether you are interested in the practices. If you are interested in practices, then I think uh, uh, Manish will be able to help. There are many advanced techniques called MSR, DPET, Pranic Energization, Mind Sound Resonance Technique. Uh, but that would be completely practice for that matter. But if you're interested in the theory, you can go down. Uh, people with first degree of can cancer, when they come for alternate therapies like yoga, naturopathy, Ayurveda, and Abhyanga, full massage, what your Ayurveda suggests for our cancer, they can definitely uh, have a reversal effect. So that is there, that, uh, that, uh, that is medically proven, um, Shimona. There are many researchers, if you could go down to uh, Google and then find out, you will, you will find a plenty number of uh, researches over there, even, you know, uh, in the, cited in the international journals, you know, indexed international journals. So yes, definitely the work is progressive. And uh, with bre breast cancer patients, we have worked upon, uh, we worked upon um, uh, cancer in the lungs, you know, in the respiratory uh, uh, tract, uh, cancer in the uh, ovarian, ovarian cancer, cancer in the reproductory tract. Yes, there have been reversal, but the thing is, if you, you know, come to the uh, surrendering aspect of yoga, <laughs> When, when you, you know, it is unnew, it is like first degree, then it would be much more helpful. With second and third degree, it becomes complicated. Okay, thank you. Yes, Manish. I had a question, but I think it will take some time. So I can start the next session with that question. Okay, again, so yeah. the question. <laughs> so, if you don't have any questions, we can conclude it here. And next session, I will start with the question. So for the next session, it would be how to overcome attractions and repulsions. For the next session, it would be a reversal of uh, autoimmune disorders. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Namaste. Bye. Namaste. Bye. Bye. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Okay, so we'll start the class then. Give two minutes and then we can change and then we'll start the class. Meanwhile, we can have change at the time.
Just a minute. Okay, Lorraine, you have your phone. I have to get off this meeting.